Hello and welcome to Walk the Cinema Quickies. And today we bring you Master and Commander, which was a letterbox suggestion by Colden Paulo. I think that it's your name. Don't be offended if I said it wrong, please. Yeah, so Master and Commander. It's about a Master, master. that's in Commander <laughs> of his boat. Yes. The surprise. Yes, it's a British ship during the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. Um, and their their I guess mission was to to kind of find and capture this French boat. Mm. They get they get attacked by the French boat. Because mm -hmm. it's bigger and faster and it's like a new design yeah. for uh, ships warships mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this is a big epic starting Russell Crowe a little bit too late for epics in Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a bad film, I guess. No. Especially the first the first act it kinda goes pretty snappy, mm -hmm. you know. I think it's the second act that's a little more draggy. Yeah. Once you get to the second act it's kind of like, okay, where where are we going here? What's <laughs> this thing this thing, this movie was technically very well done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they really wanted. Because it's two hours, fifteen minutes. And it's super well shot, and the boats are incredible looking. But the story is not big enough for two, two hours and 15 minutes for me, personally. Yeah, and I, I know that this was supposed to be kind of the jumping off point to a bigger, broader series, I think. Because yeah. um, it is based on... A, a lot of books. Yeah, a book series. Um, but it just didn't... It it didn't hit with the audiences at the time, and it financially didn't hit. It wasn't a flop. Yeah. But he barely made its money back, especially after advertisement and the Oscar campaign. But critically, it was a success, mm. and still to this day, a lot of people love it. We got it suggested by someone that absolutely loves this movie. Yeah. Uh, I just don't love it personally. Yeah. I can see how some people would. Yeah, it's it's definitely um, yeah. I can see how some people would it's, love it. It's definitely not a bad movie. It's not terribly done. To me, it's just the story doesn't hit. Yeah, that just happens. And I think that in relation to other things that came out that year, because it came out in two thousand three, another pirate movie came out in mm. two thousand three, or like a ship movie which, with Pirates of the Caribbean. And I feel like I, if you're gonna watch a ship movie, like a movie about a boat, pirates you know, sea battles, mm -hmm. I feel like more people would be would gravitate towards the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Than... I, but I don't think it has to do with the ships. I think at the time, fantasy movies were way more popular than epics. Yeah. Epics were more of then, even though Gladiator with Russell Crowe came out three years before and it was a huge success. I also don't like that. I, honestly, I like Master and Commander way more Yeah. <laughs> than Gladiator, but yeah, we're moving towards fantasy. A fantasy movie won Best Picture. And I think it was too late for this movie to come out. Definitely not to be a franchise starter. But as an isolated movie, I enjoyed it a lot at moments. And I was bored at other moments, but I never hated it. Yeah, I agree. I never hated it. It was, it was just kind of okay. It wasn't like... I, it would never be one of my favorite movies, mostly because I'm not a huge fan of epics, typically. Mm -hmm. There are exceptions, but typically I'm not a huge fan of those kind of historic epics. I really like the Galapagos scenes. Yeah. Th th those are super well shot. I think some of the battles weren't particularly incredibly shot, mm -hmm. but they, you know, they worked. And I also feel like sometimes um, just the way that it was shot, I, and maybe it was because I wasn't paying like too much attention or not enough that I could get who all was who in some I guess when you're not this. super involved in the movie, that's just naturally going to happen. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the story is too complicated for us to explain in a quickie. So we're just, we're just saying what we think. Mm. And, I mean, we've been wanting to watch it for a long time. Yeah, it's And since we got it suggested, we decided we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Maybe and make someone's day a little bit, you know, happier. I don't know. Yeah. I and doubt it because we're not complimenting it too much. But I do think that sometimes people have steered clear from this because it's been said to supposed to end on a cliffhanger. 
mm. that was supposed to be concluded in, That's what in, I thought, yeah. in other movies, but watching it, it really doesn't have like too much of a... I don't think it's a real cliffhanger. No. I think it just sets up a sequel. Yeah. But it, they still win yeah. in the end. And then they kind of... They don't get away with the French boat. They mm-hmm. just have to follow the French boat to tell them that the captain is still, is alive. still alive and yeah. was lying to be the portrayed as the doctor. Yeah. But I don't think it's a cliff ending movie. I think yeah. it, it ends. Yeah, it does end. So I feel like people that are worried about not having an ending, which I do think a lot of people steer clear of movies that don't have mm-hmm. clear cut endings, like this doesn't necessarily have the cliffhanger that yeah. I was expecting. I think this definitely is better than what I was hoping it could be. Yeah. But still, I don't love it. Yeah. I gave it a solid six. Yeah. Kind of just an average. It was never going to be a negative review for me. Just mm. average, yeah. But those are our thoughts on Master and Commander. If what you, are yours? If you have a suggestion, you could always put your suggestion on our letterbox list. Um, like, share, subscribe. And we'll see you next time.